I wanted to marry a love girl, a girl only interested in love girl. That would have been the first sentence of this masterpiece of golden literature. Mexico City Blues is the great modern religious poem. Mexico City Blues is like what came out of his mouth first. Pure, perfect gems of, of lucid poetry. Uh, poetry being what it is today. It was a refreshing uh, concept in the uh, mid-1950s when poetry was a little the way it is today. Lots of poetry about poetry and language about language. They got nothing on me at the university. Them clever poets of immensity with charcoal suits and charcoal hair and green armpits and heaven air and checks to balance my account in Rome benighted by white Russians without care who puke in windows everywhere. They got nothing on me, cause I'm dead. He's writing something that he understands to be like Pound's Cantos but his own, and in his complete misunderstanding of it, I think he creates a, a, a great masterpiece of singing, religious poem. A white poem. A white, pure, spotless poem. A bright poem. A nothing poem. A no poem, non poem, non dream, clean. Silver dawn, clear. Silent of birds, pool, burble, bark, clear. The lock of trees, the needle pines, the rock, the pool, the sandy shore, the cleanness of dogs. The frogs, the pure, white, spotless, honing, honey land blues. Woo. Same voice on the same ship. The supreme vehicle, SS Excalibur. Maynard, Mainline, Mountain, Merud Vaga, Mershon of Missy. We've all been sent on a mission to conquer the desert so that the shrouded traveler behind us makes tracks in the dust that don't exist. Heal or will all end in hell. All end in heaven, for sure. Unless my guess is wrong, we're all in it. We are all in for it, and our time is life. The penalty death, the reward to the victor then goes. The victor is not self, and the victor is not pride, and the victor is not. Thus spake Tathagata. But I get tired of waiting in pain in a situation where I ain't sure, where I am not sure, where I am wolf, sorrow, Whitman free, Melville dark, Mark Twain, Mark Twain, where I am wild, where I am mild. <laughs> Thank you.
innumerable infinite songs, great suffering of the atomic inverse, which may or may not be controlled by a consciousness of which you and the ripples of the waves are a part. That's Buddhism. That's universal mind, pan cosmodicy. Einstein believed in the God of Spinoza. Two Jews, two Frenchmen. Einstein probably put a lot of people in the bug house by saying that all those pseudo intellectuals went home and read Spinoza. Then they dug into the subtleties of pantheism. After 10 years of research, they wrap it up and sit down on a bench and decide to forget all about it. Because pantheism's too much for them. They wind up trying to find out about Plato, Aristotle. They end up in a vicious morphine circle. <laughs> I don't really have an introduction for myself, but I just wanted to tell a little story. I was, I was watching Barney and Clyde the other night on TV, and there was that moment right towards the end where um, they sort of know that number's up, and Barney reads a poem, or writes a poem about Barney and Clyde, and, and he just kind of looks at her and goes, Bah, that's beautiful. Like, Barney, you've really done something. And it was this great moment inside the film, and I thought about it for a while, and what occurred to me that was so great about that poem, or her writing that poem, or that poem being inside that movie, was that the poem made them know they were inside of something, you know? Yeah. You like that? I mean, that's what I think is really great about poetry, is that, that, that moment where the window flies open and you realize you're inside of life, you know, rather than be outside of it. Like everything else, like videotapes, makes me know I'm outside of it, you know? The big engines in the night, the diesel on the pass, the airplane in the Pan American night, night, the blazing silence in the night, the Pan Canadian night, the eagle on the pass, the wire on the rail, the high hot iron of my heart. The blazing chicka ball whapped by extra special super high job 0169 be floundering down to kill Roy. What we're doing here is not a reenactment. We're not pretending to be beat poets. It's also not a performance of, of peace or literature that we know and love because many of us don't know it that well. Mexico City Blues is a very strange entity. What we're doing is more along the lines of a scientific archaeological experiment, an exploration. The tools that we'll be using are musical instruments and many different voices by which we may be able to play some of the different tonalities in uh, Mexico City Blues. At the same time, you'll be able to see some of the different paths that this tradition has taken in the faces of the different readers. Kerouac described Mexico City Blues as follows. I want to be considered a jazz poet blowing a long blues in an afternoon jam session on Sunday. I take 242 choruses. My ideas vary and sometimes roll from chorus to chorus or from halfway through a chorus to halfway into the next. And I don't even exist less sing And I've been paid for work I done when I was young And work was fun I don't know name from mercy Ain't got no blues, no shoes, no eyes No shoe tongues, lungs No happiness, no art Nothing to do, nothing to part No hairs to split 
Sidewalks to spit, words to make flit in the fun of make it horror and makeshift poetry covering the fact I'm afraid to work at a steady job. You just don't know. What don't I know? How good this ham and eggs is. If you had any idea whatsoever how good this is, then you would stop writing poetry and dig in. It's been so long since I've been hungry. It's like a miracle. Ah, oh boy, but them bacon and them egg. Where the hell is the scissors? I'll take you home again, Kathleen. Transcendental inner mind, where glorious radiant howdahs are being carried by elephants through groves of flowing milk, past paradises of waterfall into the valley of bright gems by rubying an antique ocean floor of undiscovered splendor in the heart of unhappiness. Roll along, roll along, o'er the deep blue sea. Yes, life would have been a mistake without music. I didn't attain nothing when I attained highest perfect wisdom known in Sanskrit as Anuttara Samyak Sambodha. I attained absolutely nothing. Nothing came over me. Nothing was realizable. In perceiving the Dharma, I achieved nothing. What worries me is not nothing, but everything. The trouble is number. But since everything is nothing, then I am worried nil. In seeking to attain the Dharma, I failed, attaining nothing. And so I succeeded the goal, which was pure, happy nothing. No matter how you cut it, it's empty, delightful baloney. Number 113. Got up and dressed up and went out and got laid. Then died and got buried in a coffin in the grave. Man, yet everything is perfect because it is empty. Because it is perfect with emptiness. Because it's not even happening. Everything is ignorant of its own emptiness. Anger doesn't like to be reminded of fits. You start with the teaching inscrutable of the diamond and end with it. Your goal is your starting place. No race was run. No walk of prophetic toenails across Arabies of hot meaning. You just numbly don't get there. It's a graph of consciousness poetry. You write down whatever comes into your mind unedited and uncensored. Darling, red hot. That kind of camping. Don't camp. You know very well what will happen to you when you die and claim you don't know you're dead. I say, wake up. That's like Carl Solomon and Sean Joy. I know that I'm dead. I won't camp. I'm dead now. What, am I waiting for it to vanish? I know we're all straight. I knew from a tree. I leaned on a tree, and the tree told me. Tree told me, hey, be, the maybe is a b. Trees don't talk good. No, they don't talk good. This tree just told me, see, eternity. When sad, sick women sing their sex blues in your ear, have no fear. Have no fear, the moon is true enough. But, 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 but. Around. 
I'd rather die than be famous. Remembering my birth in infancy, the coughs, the swallows, the tear trees growing from your eyeballs of shame, the gray immense morning I was conceived in the womb, and the red gory afternoon delivered therefrom. Wow. Wow! I could sing you hounds, make you bell howl packs, zounds. I'd have lived and lived laughing as a child if somebody could have told me it was unreal. If somebody could have told me it was unreal. I was scared. I was scared. The dark was full of phantoms come from the other side of death to claim the hearts of sacrificial little children laying up in the winter night in cribs by howling windows of the cold and forlorn earth of Massachusetts February, Massachusetts March. Massachusetts February, Massachusetts March. Wild lupine howl cold the moony and loony nights. I thought I was a phantom, me, myself, suffering. One night I saw my older brother Gerard standing over my crib with wild hair, as if he had just pee visited the pail in the hall of snores and headed back for his room, was investigating the grail, Nin and Ma's bedroom, who slept in the same bed and in the crib alongside. Oily is the moment, so that phantom was my brother, only in the sense that cotton is soft. Only in the sense that when you die, you muffle in your sigh the thorny hard regret of rocks of life belief. I knew, I hoped, to go be saved. And they, by their own drift, turned to Jack's memories of the religious visions of his little brother Gerard as Gerard was dying. Jack becomes enormously emotionally invested in, in, in this work of art. Pow! The girls go for that long red tongue from the pimp with the long red car. They lay it in his hand, the prophet's curfew. He takes it, the yellow kid. He's the man. She goes home and hustles Remembering Caroline, the hills went little, and watermelon flies on the porch, but she loved that long red tongue. And the man is a sucker, someone lower than she is. Have to buy a couple of needles tomorrow. Feels like shoving a nail in me. Just like shoving a nail in me, goddamn. <laughs> For the first time in my life, I pinch the skin and push the needle in, and the skin pinched together, and the needle stuck right out, and I shot in and out. Goofed half my whole shot on the floor. Took another one. Nothing a junkie likes better than sitting quietly with a new shot. And knows tomorrow's plenty more. That's why they call it cheer. A bottle of wine, a glass, a drink, a cup of courage. Such a Lower East Side sonnet. Drug addicts are human beings less dangerous than alcoholics. And alcoholics aren't so bad. Look at the speed drivers. Look at the sex fiends. Look at the sex fiends speeding through their suicide. Nembutals, guns and jumps in the river. Lily saved the man's life. Flying with legs out the window to crash the locomotive at the X crossing. The larceny commission will hear of this fight the lawyers, upset the silly laws, anger the harebrained bird of wine, in this his railroad tamashanter, commemorative termagant, able to dissect such tycoon burpers out of their B-movies investment in black, Bob. Even on a sailboat, I end up writing Bob. Every one of us, Roman circus sacrifices, every one. Cunnilingus. Ayasem samo apash. Koi puši hašiš u staroj kazbi pored lampe. And if you knew what I meant, you would say, you disgust me. 
All right, ring the devil free. Bong, ring the devil free. Prong, ring the devil free. Song, ring the devil free. Only the mothers are happy. Three Saints in Four Acts by Gertrude Stein. A great prophet is a great teacher, but he is also a great saint, and he is furthermore a great man, and more than that, an incomparable listener to music and non-music everywhere, and a great sitter under trees, and a man of trees, and a man of sorrows, and a lemon light of angel sounds, and singer of religion, wild singer of cum -igen, wild lover of the origin, wild hater of hate his own. Convulsive writer of poems and dialogue for saints, stomping their feet on Pirandellian stage. There's 1,250 men sitting around a grove of trees outside a town right now, with Buddha as their leader, discoursing in the middle, sitting lotus position, hands to the sky, explaining the Dharma in a sutra so high. It's that serenade, oh serenade in the blue, in the blue. Left the tombs to go and look at the millions of cut glass. A guy clocking them as you look, you swallow, you get so fat you can't leave the building. Stand straight, don't tip over, breathe in such a way your fatness deflates. Go back to the tombs, ride the elevator. He tips over again, gazes on the lights, eats them, is clocked. Gets so fat, he can't leave elevator, has to stand straight and breathe out the fat. Hurry back to the tomb. This is the Matisse story of a simple arrangement of natural objects in a room on a Sunday afternoon. Bits of dry dust, black ashes. The edge of the tray is bright red. The strawberries are crimson, dull painted, juicy dimensional. Indefinable silver lights on the knife and blade Rest, dark death, and the tragic gloom inside the wall of the tumbled wax, Attican and shapely. How fucking Faustian can we be? Must everything have meaning? Brap, pohawk, he's coughing, busy. Am, bursting the part the seams of his trousers with power of assembled intentions. Brack, brap. As years later, GJ would imitate him, your father, Zag, he goes along, prop, prop, prop. Praised be man for existing in milk and living in lilies. And his violin music takes place in milk and creamy emptiness. Praised be the unfolded inside petal flesh of tenderest thought. Petrels on the following wave valleys idly sing themselves asleep. Praised be delusion, the ripple. Praised the holy ocean of eternity. Praised be I, writing, dead already and dead again. Dipped in ancid ingle, the flammed of Tim. The Anglo-Ogo-Saxon maneuvers of old poetos. Praised be wood, it is milk. Praised be honey at the source. Praised be the embrace of soft sleep. The valor of angels in valleys of hell on earth below. Praised be the non-ending. Praised be the lights of Earthman. 
Praised be the watchers. Praised be my fellow man for dwelling in milk. 242nd chorus. The sound in your mind is the first sound that you could sing. If you were singing at a cash register with nothing on your mind, this is the condemnation of poetry as well as a. The sound in your mind is the first sound that you could sing if you were singing at a cash register with nothing on your mind. But when that grim reaper comes to lay you, look out, my lady, he will steal all you got while you dingle with the dangle and having robbed you, vanish which will be your best reward. Stop the murder and the suicide. All's well. I am the guard. Charlie Parker looked like Buddha. Charlie Parker, who recently died laughing at a juggler on TV. After weeks of strain and sickness, was called the perfect musician and his expression on his face was as calm, beautiful, and profound as the image of the Buddha represented in the East. The lidded eyes, the expression that says, all is well. This was what Charlie Parker said when he played, all is well. Charlie Parker, forgive me. Forgive me for not answering your eyes. for not having made an indication of that which you can devise. Charlie Parker, pray for me. Pray for me and everybody in the nirvanas of your brain where you hide, indulgent and huge. No longer Charlie Parker, but the secret unsayable name that carries with it merit, not to be measured from here to up, down, east or west. Charlie Parker, Lay the bane off me and everybody. <laughs> <laughs> 